I'm so excited to interview Joseph, the co-founder of SAS. SAS is the first layer one for infinite data storage and milliseconds execution, powering design, AI, and deep innovation. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Renee. Thank you for having me. And very nice meeting you. Thank you, Joseph. Firstly, could you share your professional background and the vision behind funding SAS? Sure. My background is primarily consists of network infrastructure,、uh, consists of networking and security for networking. So my background contributed quite a bit into the Web3 world because my familiarity with the IT infrastructure to enhance the connectivity, security, and scalability in the network world. Okay, thank you, Joseph. I noticed that、um, you have a very extensive and professional background. So, how did your previous career experience help you in building SaaS? Well, my background in, uh, in the networking contributed quite a bit because uh, of uh, my infrastructure knowledge in the networking world. Going into the decentralized world is a little bit different because due to the say distributed computing, decentralized、uh, computing, and、uh, cryptography, data storage, and while、well, cybersecurity is a familiarity in the traditional network world as well. Uh, so what we looking at the difference between the two is distributed computing in the traditional sense is、uh, you make your、uh, computing power throughout the globe and at at different segments connected to the routing. So in the Web three sense, it, you already have the network infrastructure in place, and so we have to dissect those、uh, computing power. To the different nodes that join into the Web3 world, my knowledge in that sense it, it is a familiar piece for me, and I am really helping designing the infrastructure in that sense. Cryptography, we are very familiar with cryptography because we deal with it every day. Data sensitivity going across the public internet, it is just so dangerous nowadays, and where we have to really protect the privacy integrity of the data. So we have to use encryption, different encryption at different levels. There's other couple of things、uh, like、uh, data storage. In the traditional network, we don't really involve too much in data storage, but we are involved somewhat because we always always need data, including networking. So the data has to be somewhere. We are familiar with the traditional sense in the data storage is、um, they are centralized. They are controlled by a central uh, identity, uh, whoever is controlling the database. So now in the Web3 world, we want to bypass that. And in the Web3 world, we can do that by enable privacy and sovereignty, which means the data ownership. So where the users can control the data themselves. Okay, thank you, Joseph. As a youth, this、uh, we do care about our、uh, security and the、um, data ownership. Actually, so the next question: SaaS is described as a third-generation、uh, decentralized cloud storage protocol. Could you briefly share with us how does its technical architecture differ from other solutions like Filecoin? Filecoin, they have been、uh, in the Web three world longer than SaaS. Yes. So our the difference, let's just say、uh, our core vision. We want to be a scalable, privacy preserving storage for AI native Web three. Our data persistence consists of dynamic storage with redundancy and recovery. We really have a, a strong focus on the proxy encryption and location based storage selection. I'll get into that a little bit later. And they are limited、uh, native privacy. Our platform, we want to be a not quite all in one solution, but we want to be a comprehensive solution for Web three. So we have the building AI link protocol, and we use our T nodes for secure compute. We all gear towards the same thing: decentralized storage. We all focus on the user. We all focus on Web three, but we are different from different point of view. Let's even say that the token utility. We、uh, have staking. We have governance. We have storage, compute, CDN. So we mentioned that SaaS enables、uh, milliseconds level data retrieval at the beginning. What specific impact does this have on Web three applications like AI, design, and gaming? The bottom line is, first of all, data is very important. Protecting the data, data integrity, privacy, and also performance. We really need to have millisecond performance on the network because can you imagine a gamer while playing the game, all of a sudden everything stops for a second? 
That's right. I, will, I will say that gamer will not be happy. So we have uh, the decentralized content delivery layer where we can provide that millisecond level data retrieval. And we have the edge delivery for latency sensitive applications uh, like gaming, AI, or even the high frequency trading for real time analytics. So at that level, level we also deploy uh, within our CDN nodes, we have uh, caching. So caching, indexing. Okay, thank you for sharing. I remember you've mentioned at Blockchain Summit that Web3 is the most complex attempt to connect a global computing power, data, and the networks. What is SaaS strategic positioning in the Web3 decentralized storage ecosystem? SaaS, we have a strategy niche in the Web3 storage ecosystem. So we focus on what most other overlook, like that being dynamic, being high frequency, being in uh, privacy sensitive, uh, protecting the privacy sensitive data. So really Farcoin dominates uh, cold storage and are we really good at uh, permanence storage? We position ourselves as a real-time data backbone for AI native enterprise grade and compliance heavy applications. This is how we fit into the Web3 uh, landscape. Okay, thank you, Joseph. And uh, thank you for your professional sharing. Then maybe we talk about the future outlook and the personal version. Uh, what achievements do you hope SaaS will accomplish in the future? The overall future vision, we like to become a cornerstone for Web3. So we want to redefine the data value infrastructure by enabling a secure, real-time, decentralized data exchange. And we want to empower the ethical AI ecosystem through privacy-preserving compute and federated learning. And we really, really want to anchor the next generation of Depend, Design, and Enterprise Web3 applications with uh, scalable, compliant infrastructure. Specific goals, we like to target leadership in dynamic data storage. So we want to really aim to support trillions of data transactions per year, especially in the field or industry of AI, finance, design, healthcare. And I'm very happy to say we have passed that BMM level one with flying colors in such a short time. Most of other projects, they are still working on the standardization evaluation. It could be months, it could be years. They were impressed with our project as well. Okay, I believe that uh, SES will achieve that goal. And the last question, as a serial entrepreneur and venture capitalist, what advice would you give to starters entering the Web3 space? Well, breaking into the Web3 is like going into a new world. Yes. And it could be a maze. When you first get exposed to it, it's like going into an unfamiliar territory because people are so familiar with Web2. And when you throw them blockchain, when you throw them decentralization, people go say, what is that? So what are we for the starter entrepreneurs? What do you need to do to start with a real problem? So identify the pain points. Get yourself familiar with decentralization and blockchain. What is missing? You really need to talk to potential users and uh, say enterprise uh, buyers to see what the requirements are and their scope of project. You want to be familiar with the building blocks. Get a really good understanding of blockchain primitives like consensus, tokenomics, data availability proof, and always keep an eye on the Web2 analogs like the content delivery network. User experience, like I mentioned before, Web2 users are so familiar with the speed performance of the rapid process. So we want to have a smooth onboarding, have an abstract wallet, simplifying gas payments, pay by the apps or meta transactions. There are so many other things. I think those are the major things just to really do for the first time entrepreneur get into the Web3 world. Just be quick learners and definitely get in the requirement from the people who are actually using those technologies. So what they're looking for in the Web3 world, how can uh, your project help them in a way that they feel at ease? So we have to be in a hybrid situation. You may have to combine your Web2 and Web3 pro uh, project together and uh, to bridge the gap. So that's what I suggest. 
Okay, thank you, thank you, Joseph. That's really cool, and、um, thanks for your honest sharing. I think、um, it's really useful, and、uh, um, I truly believe SAS will achieve great things under the leadership of such an、um, amazing founding team and with the support of the community. And、um, I'll definitely stay tuned for updates. So,、um, very thanks again for your time today, Joseph. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for your time too.